The Carolina Panthers under head coach Ron Rivera have been one of the most zone-heavy defensive schemes in the NFL. The 2018 season was no different as the Panthers were seventh in the entire league in the percentage of zone coverage schemes run as opposed to man coverage schemes. What's interesting about this chart from Sports Info Solutions is that the Arizona Cardinals and the Buffalo Bills, both who had head coaches that come under the Ron Rivera coaching tree, also lean heavily towards a zone defensive scheme. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to look at the basics of the different zone coverage schemes that the Panthers ran throughout the year, and then we'll dig in the different ways that Ron Rivera disguised these coverages to confuse opposing offenses. First, let's get into the basics of a zone defensive scheme. Suppose I could divide the field up into nine different zones. On the back end, I'll divide it into four, so I have deep fourths for each of my defensive backs. On the underneath zones, I'll have curl and flat on both sides and a hook. So in total, I have nine different zones. In a perfect world, I'll have one player in each of these zones and I should be well protected against any pass scheme. But if I occupy nine defenders in coverage, I can only rush two. And anybody who watched the Panthers and Steelers game last year, two-man rush is not something we want to see very often. Typically, a team will rush four, so that will leave seven defenders to cover nine zones. So as a result, each zone defensive scheme will have a weakness as you're putting strain on certain players to cover multiple zone areas. So really, the, when you decide which type of zone defense is appropriate for the particular down and distance, you know, these are the things you have to think about. What the offensive personnel is, down and distance, you know, what are you trying to stop? So these are the types of things that just to keep in mind as we're going through this video, as we get into each of the different coverages. Let's begin with a discussion of the cover three defense, which was one of the more commonly run coverages by the Panthers last year. In the cover three defense, you'll have three deep defenders, each responsible for deep thirds. These are typically your three best coverage players. And the underneath defenders, you have four to cover the short to intermediate routes. The advantage of a cover three is you're well protected against the vertical pass game, and you have an extra safety in the box to better support against the run. So this is a very good early down defense when you're, when you're not sure whether the offense is going to come out with run or pass. As you can see on this play against Atlanta, the Panthers have three deep defenders taking away the deep ball and Atlanta's not able to get connect on a vertical pass to Julio Jones. The Panthers are able to run the cover three defense over a variety of different looks. In this case, the Bengals come out in a multiple tight end formation, so instead of having Dante Jackson down in the box covering a tight end and being a contained defender against the run, they move him to free safety to just create better matchups. On this play, the Bengals are going to run a play action pass, but I want you to watch how wide open the flat area is as the Panthers are in this cover three defense. So that's going to bring me to my next point about what the weaknesses of a cover three defense is. You know, the cover three puts a lot of strain on the curl flat defender, which is typically a linebacker. So teams like to attack the flats with quick short passes. And also vertical routes down the seams are also a good way to attack the cover three defense. We saw teams attack the seams against the Panthers multiple times this year. Against the Eagles, watch how Zach Ertz is able to attack the seam. And the Panthers safeties and cornerbacks are unable to collapse fast enough to take it away. And again, down in the red zone against the Washington Redskins, Vernon Davis is going to attack the seam and he'll split the curl flat and hook curl defenders. Alex Smith does a good job of holding the safety and just watch how wide open the seam becomes in this cover three defense. So because of that, there's different ways to patch up these holes in the cover three. One concept teams like to do is something that we call pattern matching or certain zone coverage defenders will convert to man cover defenders. In this case, Shaq Thompson, the curl flat defender, would become a man coverage defender and guard Vernon Davis down the seam route and ride him to the safety to take that route away. Let's watch Thomas Davis in action do exactly that against the Cleveland Browns. The Panthers will come out in a cover three, and I watch how Thomas Davis sees the tight end attacking the seam, but instead of going to his normal curl flat responsibility, he's going to stick with the tight end, become a man coverage defender, and he's going to stay with him the whole way down the field. Now the Browns are still able to get the completion, but we're just talking about the general concept of pattern matching here, so you saw it in action. Another thing the curl flat defender needs to be aware of is covering the wheel routes. So watch out Thomas Davis here, the curl flat defender, 
follows the tight end up the wheel route and he's able to stay with him and get a pass breakup. So that's just a good, excellent play by Thomas Davis there. Then watch Rarick Reed in action here. The Redskins are going to motion their tight end across, so the Panthers are going to rotate their safeties. The reason you want to rotate here is Eric Reed now has to, one, become the curl flat defender in the cover three defense, and two, he has to be your contained defender and run support. As you can see here, the Redskins run this wheel route, so Eric Reed's going to stay with the tight end up the wheel route, and the Redskins have nowhere to throw the ball. Next, let's talk about the cover two defense. In this case, you're going to have two deep safeties, each responsible for deep halves of the field. Now you'll have five underneath defenders to take away the short to intermediate routes. So the purpose of a cover two is to take away teams' short, quick passing game. As you see here against Baltimore, the Panthers are able to quickly converge on an underneath route. But the cover two with only two deep safeties has weaknesses vertically as there's soft areas in the corners and in the middle of the field where teams can split the two safeties. Let's take a look at how the Giants attack the Panthers cover two. As you'll watch at the bottom of your screen, the receiver's going to settle in that soft area in between the corner and the safety, and the Giants are able to get a big chunk play while the Panthers are in this defense. So what you want to see to defend that is the corners sink a little bit deeper to try to squeeze that corner route and create a tighter throwing window for the corner, the quarterback. Sorry. As you see here against the Redskins, Dante Jackson gets a little bit deeper in his drop here, and that just creates a tight throwing window for Alex Smith to try to squeeze the ball to his receiver. You also see Dante do it again here against Philadelphia. The Panthers come out and cover two, so the Eagles are going to try to attack them with this corner route in between the corner and the safety. But as you'll see here, Dante gets more depth in his drop this time, and it just creates a tighter throwing window for the quarterback to get the completion. As far as the middle of the field, that's the advantage of having an all-world linebacker like Luke Keekley on your defense. Let's take a look at Luke Keekley operating some of these cover two coverages. First against the Redskins, they're going to try to attack the vulnerable area right in the middle of the field. But watch Luke Keekley here as he gets a little bit deeper in his drop. He's going to communicate with his linebackers to take away the underneath routes, and Alex Smith is forced to eat the ball, and the Panthers are able to get a sack. Now watch here as the, Pan the Redskins try to split the safeties by sending their tight end vertically across the middle. So what the Panthers do is what's called a Tampa 2. You need a fast athletic linebacker like Luke Keekley to be able to run this defense. With Luke's ability to be able to run with tight ends and wide receivers, you can run more of a Tampa 2 and Luke can serve as your deep third defender, kind of like a free safety. So a Tampa 2 you can think of as kind of a disguise cover 3 except your deep middle defender is your middle linebacker instead of your free safety. So that just gives you an idea of the type of athleticism that Luke Keekley possesses. Let's watch him here in the red zone against the Baltimore Ravens. He's going to run with the receiver in this case. The Panthers come out in this Tampa 2 and watch Luke Keekley run with the wide receiver and there's nowhere for Joe Flacco to throw the ball. So you just, as you can see, Luke Keekley's you know, athleticism to be able to run with tight ends and wide receivers, his IQ to be able to get guys in position and be a general in the middle of the field, just makes the Panthers cover two defense that much more effective. Now let's briefly talk about cover four, quarters coverage. Here you're clearly trying to defend against the vertical passes if you have four deep defenders. Watch here as the Panthers come out in the cover four and Dante Jackson's able to sit on this vertical route, jump it, and able to step up and get the interception. Now I won't spend too much time on the cover four because it's pretty clear on what the strengths and weaknesses are. Your weaknesses are underneath in the curl flat area and also against the run game because like a cover two you have two deep safeties which means one less guy in the box for run support. Now let's get to the fun part. You know, we talked about the basics of the various coverages, but if an offense comes to the line of scrimmage and they know what coverage you're in, they'll be able to attack it, you know, call audibles and attack the weaknesses in your different zones. So one thing that's key for defenses to be able to do is disguise your coverages. So now we're going to look at some of the ways the Panthers have disguised coverages last year. Let's first watch week two against Atlanta. What you'll see here is the Falcons are going to go in motion and James Bradbury is going to follow Julio Jones. So that gives Atlanta the indication that the Panthers are in man coverage. As typically in a man coverage situation, you'll see the cornerback for, 
follow the receiver across the formation. So the Pan Falcons are going to try to attack Bradbury in the slot with this corner route. But what you'll actually see here is the Panthers are in a cover three. So what you'll see here is that that corner route's well defended as you have Dante Jackson as your deep third defender. Now Matt Ryan's forced to take off and he's eat the ball. Here the Panthers come out in what looks like a two deep safety look. But I want you to watch Rashawn Golden on this play. Right before the ball is snapped, the Panthers' safeties are going to rotate, and Mike Adams will become your deep third defender, so it ends up being a cover three shell. Captain Munnerlin's going to blitz off the edge, so Rashawn Golden has to rotate to replace him as the curl flat defender. So that's what you mean when you hear zone blitz. You know, certain guys are blitzing, and other guys have to rotate and replace them in coverage. Here, Rashawn Golden's going to first account for the number two receiver, and then pass him off to Luke Keekley once he exits his zone. Once he's no longer responsible for that number two receiver, he keeps his eyes on this next guy entering his zone, which is the running back, and he's able to come up and have everybody accounted for. So you just see good awareness and zone coverage there by Rashawn Golden. On this next play, the Panthers come out in a single high safety look pre-snap. So like we talked about earlier, the weaknesses of a cover three is this quick passes to the flats. So the Redskins see this coverage, and that's what they're going to do here. They're going to try to send this tight end on the flat route and hit him quickly to attack this cover three defense. But watch what happens after the snap. The Panthers' safeties are actually going to rotate, and now you have a cover two defense. You have two deep safeties and five underneath defenders. So the Panthers are well protected against these short, quick passes, and there's nothing there for the Redskins, so Alex Smith is forced to eat the ball. Here again, the Panthers come out in what looks like a two-deep safety look pre-snap. So what Tampa Bay is going to do is what we call a flood concept, where you flood one side of the field and attack the defense at three different levels. So your wide receiver is just going to run a fly route to occupy the cornerback and run them off. Your inside slot receiver is going to run a deep out, which should theoretically occupy the safety, and you should have an open, quick pass to the flat underneath based on this route concept and what the defense looks like. Well, watch what the Panthers do after the snap. They're going to run an overload blitz to the right side, and now the running back has a choice. He can either take the linebacker or the safety, but either way, one of the guys will be a free rusher. Also, you're creating a one-on-one -on -one matchup for the defensive end, F.A. Obata, at the top of your screen. Brian Cox is going to drop in the coverage to take away the quick passes to the flats, and Eric Reed is going to rotate over to be your deep center field safety. Watch how this works as F.A. Obata is able to win his one-on-one -on -one matchup. The safety Mike Adams comes in untouched, and the Panthers are able to get a sack on the play. This is just a well-designed blitz and coverage disguise here. Let's take a look at another zone blitz run by the Panthers. Here, Captain Runnelin is going to blitz off the corner, so the safety, Rarick Reed, is going to have to rotate to become your curl flat defender, and Mike Adams has to rotate to be your deep third safety. Eric Reed... Rotates quickly, gets to his zone, and is able to deliver a big hit to force an incomplete pass. Against the New Orleans Saints, the Panthers come out in man coverage with two deep safeties. So what the Saints like to do in man coverage are these rub routes where the receivers will run crossing routes and try to pick off the defensive bats to free guys up. But Bradbury's not going to follow his man. Mike Adams will actually rotate down to pick up Bradbury's man off the pick. That frees up Bradbury to just kind of roam around, and he's able to get the interception off the tip ball. You know, great coverage by Thomas Davis as well, but, you know, this is just another good play by the Panthers' defense as you got an interception going the other way. And then lastly, the Panthers come out against the Saints in a two-deep safety look this time, but watch the safeties. They're going to rotate into a cover one hole where Mike Adams is now your deep defender in cover one, and Eric Reed's going to be kind of a robber defender underneath to take away those short to intermediate routes. Here, Dante Jackson does a good job of breaking on the ball, and the Panthers are able to get off the field on third down. So one thing you'll notice while you're watching the film and how the Panthers disguise their coverage is that the free safety and strong safety are pretty much interchangeable positions. So what we did, we went back to weeks 4 to 15 to just get a sample and see how often Mike Adams and Eric Reed played the free safety and strong safety position. And what you'll notice is that it's basically split down the middle, which just shows that it's important for the safeties to be interchangeable in the Panthers' defense. So there really is no true free safety or strong safety in Ron Rivera's defense. 
He likes to have safeties that have the skill sets to be able to do both to better allow him to disguise coverages the way he does. So there you have it. After watching this video, hopefully you get a better understanding of how the Panthers' heavy zone the defensive scheme operates and how they rotate their safeties, disguise coverages, you know, the importance of the middle linebacker and all of these things that help Ron Rivera be able to do what he does. Now, hopefully with these additional pieces and the team switching to more of a hybrid, multiple front defense, now we'll see a little bit more unpredictability with the defense. So it's just something to look forward to as we head into this upcoming year.